One of the things that I would like to get rid of is the idea that some students can learn better and some students can't. My name is Jim Lara Morgan. I'm the Chief Officer for Equity and Learning at Red Labs. I started off working at University Student Affairs, spending time as a Dean and Chief Student Affairs Officer at places like Stanford, Dartmouth College, Swarthmore College, New York University, and Abu Dhabi. And then I spent time at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as a leader on the post-secondary success team, moving on from there to join ACT as the Chief Officer for the Center for Equity and Learning, where I was, um, and help them kind of break open to share their data and think about using partnership to drive improvements and learning outcomes for students, which is a part of what drew me uh, to the attention of folks at Red Labs and then uh, ultimately to joining the team here. Problems in education, as I mentioned earlier, are very complex. Technology alone won't solve them. Teachers alone won't solve them. What we really need to do is to bring people together in a collaborative working relationship to think about how we improve the learning experience for students. So I think we'll see more precision in our ability to predict whether a student is on the right learning path. We will learn some things about their motivation and whether they're likely to get frustrated or distracted at a point where they need some kind of intervention and where the um, artificial intelligence intelligence, algorithms may be able to detect things that go unnoticed by a teacher so that we can help a student stay on the highest velocity, best trajectory learning path uh, for them. And as an organization, what we want to do then is share that information or share those insights so that more people can understand how they can improve teaching and as importantly, how they can improve the learning process. We do have incredible AI talent, and we have people who come to the AI field from different research um, interests and different academic disciplinary interests. So we have a set of learning scientists, data scientists, cognitive scientists, people who are understanding how the brain works, how people interact with uh, technology. One of the responsibilities that we have is speak directly to the fears that people have and provide reassurance. Our approach is not to replace teachers, but is to provide teachers with better tools, better resources, better information that's actionable to them and present it in a way that they can use to improve their teaching. There are some things that we can reveal that good teachers already know that some teachers might forget and that every student and every teacher needs to really understand. One of my sons has attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder. Uh, for him, to keep one channel of his brain occupied, he may sketch or doodle in his notebook. And what he's doing is channeling his attention and energy on that so that he can listen more carefully to the teacher. To the teacher, she or he may see a student who looks distracted and they perceive him to not be paying attention. The AI, I think, will be able to help us say to the teacher, this student is paying attention. Think again about what it is that you're seeing and how you're interpreting that information. In the same way, if every student in the classroom is having difficulty or many students are having difficulty with a particular concept, uh, or a piece of what they're learning, then a teacher can see that in the data and in the feedback that they receive so they know they should circle back to that student for some other support or a different way of explaining problem um, in school. I came to really love the idea that we are working simultaneously at reducing inefficiencies, ineffectiveness, and inequality in education. But one of the additional things that I would like to get rid of is the idea that some students can learn and some students can't or that some students can learn better and some students can't. I think every student has the opportunity and the talent to learn. They may learn differently, but they can all learn. When I got to Stanford, I was the director for the American Indian program there, working with Native American students from around the country, half of whom left before the end of the freshman year or early in their second year in college. The university felt that the fault lied with those students. I felt that there was something problematic in the interaction between those students and the university. And I focused then on what the students needed so they could feel a sense of belonging and have a sense of support at school, have access to tutoring if they needed it, have access to people to coach them on the finer points of getting into a classroom discussion or writing a paper. And within five years, our graduation rate for Native American students was almost an even match with the entire university average. We didn't change a thing about those students. They were beautiful when when they got there, they were as beautiful when we um, uh, looked at those students five years later. The difference was the institution changed. The focus really has to be on changing the way that we teach, changing the environment in the school, letting students know that we believe in them, and that we'll do everything that we can possibly do to help them learn. What we can do is actually to get rid of the mindset that we've inherited, which treats every student learning at the same page uh, or same pace in the same seats in the rows where they've been in generations prior and to get rid of that mindset entirely to take a truly adaptive approach to personalizing education.
Joining Red Labs surprised some of my friends, but as soon as I explained to them what attracted me to the company, they get it. Or I know that technology is going to be a piece of what will help equalize education as we've not been able to do for the last hundred years. And I think this is the right group of people to do it. I say the world is driven by talent. For talent to have an opportunity to express itself, people need to have access to education so that they can go out and make a difference in their own uh, careers. And education technology is the tool that we can use to help make sure that every person has access to the best possible educational and learning experience. We have to be the change that we want to see in the world. So I think in joining Reed, you're choosing to come to a place that wants to make a revolutionary change happen in the world in our lifetime. You have a chance to be a part of history. And these opportunities don't come along very often. You have a chance to contribute what only you can bring to this company and this movement to make a difference. And what I can guarantee is that you will never regret joining a group of people who are like-minded and dedicated to pursuing that kind of ambitious goal. I hope that same opportunity will be available to you.